Hello there, it's Sandy Allock, and today I am going to be coloring a bunny and making an easel card. Colorado Craft Company came out with another release of Anita Jerome stamps, and this one has a lot of Valentine's and love stamps for the sentiments. I'm not going to be using one of those because I don't have a Valentine. <laughs> I'm going to be sending stuff to my family, but I'm not going to send them kissy kissies necessarily. Um, my family's just not that way, so I'm going to have some different kinds of cards that I send them for Valentine's Day. But the first little part in this I'm coloring is the sky. I wanted a, a nice soft sky. And what I did was take some colorless blender and put it down on the paper first and then add the B triple zero. And that ended up giving me softer edges. So if you want really soft edges, you can do that. I'm also going to be adding some leaves up in the sky. So I'm not too worried if I didn't get the blending really perfect because I'm going to be covering some of that up. But if you end up with a perfect sky, don't add the leaves in this scene. You could just leave it as is because, you know, you don't want to wreck a perfectly good sky. Now for this little bunny, I wanted to make it brown. So I'm going to use a trio of colors in order to make the, the bunny. And they're two steps away from each other. So this is an E11. The mid-tone will be an E13, and the dark is an E15. Now, with any kinds of combinations like this, you can even go darker. I generally do. That's generally my, my way <laughs> is to go for a lot more contrast. But I'm going to try to see if I can keep myself down to a, a little more of a minimum and keep this a little bit fresher in the coloring of the bunnies because the way that Anita Jerome colors her stuff, she uses watercolor, I wanted it to feel a little bit softer. So I'm not going to go crazy and add in a whole lot more. I did choose an E42 for the belly because I wanted that to be a little different color, almost a dirtier kind of color, a cream. And now for this bunny, I'm going to use three grays, a one, three, and five, just like I used a one, three, and five in the E's. Going to use a one, three, and five here. It doesn't matter if you use a cool, a warm, a toner, a neutral, it's going to look like a gray bunny regardless. But the uh, the different kinds of grays give you just a, a slightly different look. And for each one, I put down the lightest color first, then I go to the darkest, the mid tone, and then I look for any areas where I might want to do a little bit of blending with that lighter color. And then, of course, we have a carrot being handed over as a gift. I do hope nobody gives me a carrot as a gift for a Valentine's present because I would want chocolate. No carrots. Thank you very much. But I guess I'm not a rabbit, so that's okay. Now, for the scene, I'm going to start to build up a really soft scene down here. For the tops of the grass, I wanted it to kind of disappear and, you know, don't want to have those little lines. So I'm going to blend the e, the YG03 with a YG01 at the top. You could also use the same technique I used for the sky if you want that top edge to be soft. Put down some colorless blender first. And then, as always, the drama, because I have to have drama in my cards. I have to have some stronger lighting. So I'm darkening the foreground with a YG17 and then a YG67. And my YG67 has a weird nib thing that it does, so it ends up giving me this weird texture as well. I've tried changing the nib on this one, and no matter what I do, it seems to get gunky on me. But as long as it keeps working, I'm going to not buy a new one, because it seems kind of silly to do that. So I'm going to add a more contrasty shadow under the bunnies. Now, for a lot of people, this might be just enough for a scene. But for me, it never is because I overdo everything. So I'm going to add almost a frame around my rabbits. And I'm going to put two trees, one on either side. This first one, I was playing around with what the edge should look like. Did I want it to be a straight tree? Lots of people will make a very straight, straight, straight tree. But trees have bark and they're kind of funky. So I find that a straight tree ends up looking a little stilted. So I made a sort of a funky edge to it. I'm going to do the same thing here on the other side. And as I was doing this and creating my bark, I realized that I'm going to be trimming off 
the outside edges of this because I wanted to make an easel card. I haven't made an easel card in forever. And I was going to need more trees because if I was going to trim this down so that I can put all the layers that I want to on the card, I need to add more tree. <laughs> so added in more tree on both sides in order to uh, yeah, have enough that I can trim off. The branches here, if your sky came out perfect, then by all means, don't bother adding these branches in. But I'm going to add some leaves. And I've made some sketchy types of branches in here. I didn't just draw a big old honkin' thing. I want this to feel delicate and light. And I also don't want all of these leaves to feel very much stilted. Like, you know, we're going to have an even number on left and right and make everything perfect. I just wanted it to feel all loose and floppy leaves. And I also added a second green. I'm using the same greens that I used in the the ground down there so that there's a reflection of color between the two. And just putting some marks up here for the leaves, not really trying to draw leaves specifically. And then my brown that I used for the dark brown for the bark just didn't feel dark enough, so I used some of the dark green to do that as well. Next up was to put a bunch of layers. I did a green layer, a brown layer, and a green layer on a yellow card front. And so that is the whole thing there. I've got some dimensional adhesive underneath that whole chunk of panels. And then to make the card base for the easel card, taking an eight and a half by 11, cut it in half so I had a four and a quarter by 11, and then do the normal middle fold at five and a half inches so that I have a five and a half inch long card that'll fit in an envelope. And then half of the distance, I'm gonna make a two and three quarters inch mark so that that half is divided in half. So if you're using a whole different set of measurements and you're making a whole different size card, fold it in half and then fold the other half in half to make the easel portion. So here I'm going to fold it around until I get to the correct place to fold and score the whole thing on my score buddy. And then this is going to stand up this way. It's gonna make a little triangle where the card front is gonna be adhered to the bottom portion only of that. And you'll see how that works out in a minute. But before I added it on, I decided I'd better put this in my Misty and add a sentiment. And I went to these other stamp sets that I have from Colorado Craft Company to see what fits. You know, some of these are a little more generic. I can send them to anybody and not be just Valentine's sentiments. So this little one seemed like it was going to be perfect. Adhered my panel onto that bottom half of the half, but I need something for the easel card to stand up on. So I've got some adhesive on this strip of green paper, and I decided that I wanted it only up to the white. I added all these layers on the inside too, because I just love a lot of layers on a card. And I had a strip of the scrap of yellow that I had cut off and added that to it as well, so that I could trim that down. And then when somebody opens the card and they want to stand it up, they can stand it up that way and it has that little base for the easel card to stand up on. So that is my crazy card for you today. Hope you'll try an easel card sometime. It's lots of fun and all the supply links are in the doobly-doo as always. I will see you again in another video tutorial very soon. Have an awesome day. Take care.